going to be going over convergence of series with positive terms. Okay, so um, when a n, when sequence a n um, is what's called a positive sequence, is positive sequence, um, it's basically just what it sounds like. Um, all of the terms are greater than zero. Okay, um, so when this happens, when we have a positive sequence, the partial sums, so this is partial sums, remember the notation, partial sums. Um, so the partial sums will be increasing. Okay, this is an important um, quality of positive sequences. Partial sums are increasing um, in the sense that s sub n plus 1 is always going to be greater than s sub n. And here's the reasoning why. Um, because when you have, well, okay, so here's s sub n plus 1. And this is technically equal to the partial sums um, of s sub n plus the next term, right, plus another term, um, which is a, well, okay. So technically it's that plus a um, sub n plus 1, right, because this is the additional term, which uh, makes the right side equal to the left side. And since these, um, well, okay, this s sub n alone, that's going to be a positive number already, right, because we're just adding up all these positive terms. And then on top of that, you're adding another positive term, no matter how small, but it can't be negative and it can't be zero. So this is also another positive number. So positive, positive number plus another positive number is always going to be greater than that. Okay? Greater than the initial positive number, I guess. Okay, so here are a couple things that we can do um, with these positive sequences. So, um, let's see. We have if um, s is equal to the following. Um, the infinite sum from 1, n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n. Um, so if this is a positive series, so if this is a positive series, and now it's a series because we, we have the sum sign, right? Um, then there are two cases. So given that it's positive, if Sn, if this partial sums is bounded above, so if bounded above, then we have our big then, then um, S converges, S converges. And here's a little diagram of um, what this might look like. So we have um, our x and y, and then we're going along, and let's say we start here at um, s sub 1. This is our first partial sums, and this is just equal to the first term, a sub 1, right? So here's our s sub 1, and then we're going along, and this has, this has to stay above the x-axis, right? Because we said it's going to be a positive series. So it's going to do whatever it's going to do, but it's going to have this upper bound, bounded above. So we have this upper bound, remember the notation um, capital M? So this is your upper bound and it has to stay below that line, okay? Um, so yeah, that just means that the infinite sum converges. Okay, and the second case is the exact opposite, when our partial sums are not bounded above. Then, as you could probably deduce, um, then our infinite sums Okay, I'll write the then down here. Um, it's go not going to converge, but it's going to diverge. Then S diverges. So here again, we have a um, starting somewhere above zero. Because um, that's our first term, our first partial sums. And then we're going to be going up, and there is no line here to keep it um, restricted or capped. There's no ceiling, basically. So it'll just keep going on and on forever and being more and more positive. Okay? All right, so the next thing. Um, this one's pretty important. This is called the integral test. Integral test. Okay, so for this, um, we have a couple of conditions in the beginning. So we're going to let um, a n, the sequence, equal f of n. So that basically just means turning into like an f of x function. That That is pretty easy. You just um, sub in x's for wherever you see an n. Um, so, so this, um, where, this is also part of the assumptions, where f of x is positive, first of all, um, decreasing, dec means decreasing, 
and continuous. Continuous, okay? So in this case, there are, um, well, in for this test, there are two um, ways it could go, basically. And they're, they're basically just the two ways of any kind of test, whether it converges or diverges. So um, here's the first one. If the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx, and now this f of x dx, that's just a, um, it's kind of like a different form of, for our sequence, for our original sequence, because we, we're going to take this sequence in its ends, with its ends, and transform it into x's, um, and then we're going to take the integral, basically. So if this integral converges, converges, um, then we have that the sequence, the infinite sum of the sequence, converges as well. Okay? That one's pretty uh, straightforward. And then we have the exact opposite, where if the, this same integral, the same exact integral, um, when we evaluate it, if it happens to diverge, so if this diverges, then the, the sum of the sequence will diverge as well. Okay? It's a direct relationship. So diverge. Okay. That's pretty much it for the integral test. And um, we'll do a quick example of that. So um, here, let's say they give you the following um, sum to calculate. So n goes from 1 to infinity of n squared over n to the third plus one, that squared on the bottom. Okay, so this is our a n, a sub n, right? This is our sequence. And now we want to put it in um, f of x form because we want to apply the integral test. So in f of x form, this would just be replacing all of the n's with x's. So we'll have an x squared up here. And then we're going to replace that with x cubed plus one and all of that squared. Okay, and this is um, for x is greater than or equal to 1 because that kind of replaces this n part because here this is n is greater than or equal to 1 so then you just replace that as well with an x. Okay, um, and this is uh, positive for all x is greater than 1, right, because we have a squared up here and then x can this x to the third can't be negative because our x values are only positive. Um, so this is positive. Um, it is decreasing because, as you can see, when your x values increase, then the denominator is going to grow faster, right? So this is decreasing, and it's continuous because there's no holes. Um, there's no way the bottom can be zero. And continuous, okay? So that satisfies the conditions, um, or the, yeah, the conditions for the integral test, so now we can apply it. Um, so we're going to look at the integral from 1 to infinity of our f of x. So this is x squared over x to the third plus 1 squared dx. Okay, and then from here, it's basically just applying the knowledge that we have so far. Um, so now we know how to calculate this. We're going to use our handy dandy capital R um, to replace the upper interval, or the upper bound. Um, and that's not an infinity, that's an R, capital R. And then we have our x squared, I'm just going to rewrite it, plus 1 quantity squared dx. So here you can see we have a u substitution. So our u could um, be x cubed plus 1. And our du is then 3x squared dx, right? And then to get dx by itself, we just do du divided by everything else, which was 3x squared. OK, so now we can sub in our u's. Um, so this limit is just hanging out in front still um, until we actually get to plug in infinity for r, but not yet. Um, we have to be patient with these things. So then we have, hold on, I know I put a bracket. Um, so then this is the integral, and I'm going to get rid of the limits for now, um, just because we're using the u's. And the x squared, he's just there. Um, and then we can replace the bottom with u squared. Um, and then we have du, or dx is replaced by du over 3x squared. So du over 3x squared. The x squareds cancel very conveniently. And we're left with, I'm just going to bring out the 1 over 3 in front um, of the whole limit because we can do that. <laughs> um, and it makes it more convenient for us to look at. So then we have the integral of um, u to the negative 2 and then just a du. Okay, so now we can integrate like normal. Um, and we get, so this 1 over 3 is just there. And then we have limit as r goes to infinity. Um, and this is going to be u to the negative 1 
power because um, we're going to add one and then we have to have the negative in front here okay and in the next one I'm just going to replace um, the u part with what we subbed out for x so this is actually going to be a negative and then I'll just well okay I'll bring out the negative in front this is kind of just um, trivial <laughs> decisions I guess trivial decision making that's it um, okay so this is going to be an x to the third plus one and this is to the minus one power and this is evaluated from one to capital R if you recall from here this is the last place we had the bounds um, okay so now we can plug in our big R uh, so then, okay, I'll continue this on the next page, um, so we have some more room to look at it. Okay, so now we have, um, well, okay, negative 1 over 3, uh, as the limit goes from, as the limit, as r goes to infinity, of the following. Um, then we'll have an capital R to the third plus 1 to the negative 1, and then minus a positive 1 to the third plus 1 to the negative 1. Okay? So then, um, this is going to turn out to be uh, the following. I'll write it down here. So then we have a negative 1 over 3. Well, okay, hold on. I'm going to actually switch stuff around. So I'm going to distribute this uh, 1 third into here, and then I'll distribute it into here. Because then, uh, if we write the second term first, these will make these two negatives make a positive. So this is going to be, um, well, we have a one-third, negative one-third times a negative one-half. Um, so then that's going to be one over six, right? Um, oh, hold on. Okay. Rule number one, don't forget the limit. There we go. <laughs> okay. And then now we have a positive one over six, because I, I multiplied the outer terms first, and then minus um, a one over three, and then all of this on the bottom. Right. Okay, so now at this point we can plug in infinity for r, because this is basically the simplest form we can get it in. So then we have a 1 over 6 minus 1 over 3 times basically infinity. So this actually um, is a really huge number, so the whole thing goes to 0, and we're left with a 1 over 6. Okay, so what does this 1 over 6 mean? Um, it just means that what we calculated right now was the integral. So we can say that the integral integral converges because we actually found a specific number and it's not infinity or some weird thing. Um, so by the integral test, by the integral test, um, then by the integral test, then this thing that we started with, our sequence, right? So this um, n squared over n third plus one quantity squared converges as well and then I'll continue converges as well exclamation point yay